What's going on, Facebook fam? It's your man, Dr. Will, and you guys know the deal. Let me know what city, what state, what country you are chiming in from. Even if you're watching the replay, let me know what city, what state, what country you are chiming in from. Uh, I'm back here in Phoenix, Arizona. Just got back from California. So wherever you are in the world, let me know what city, what state, what country you are chiming in from on this beautiful Thursday uh, morning, the seventh day of this new year. So um, I rarely, I rarely watch the, I rarely watch the news. Um, I don't read the newspaper. A lot of, a lot of um, my information or my awareness of situations uh, really comes from my involvement in social media. So I hadn't watched the, you know, news, uh, in several weeks and I just happened to, um, look at somebody's post yesterday and I saw what was happening at the Capitol. And then, um, I just went and I looked at, I think I Googled, um, news this week. And so then I found out that there was a bombing in Nashville. And uh, and then more more so that there was all this chaos going on um, at the Capitol, which is really, really unfortunate and which is really sad. But how do we you know, when we see things like that as the as the average public, right, as the average public beyond being uh, upset, beyond um, spitting out rhetoric man, what, what do we do? Like, what's next? Like, what's, what's next? Like, what are the next steps? And how do we remain focused? Like, it's only seven days into the new year. It's, you know, about 14 days, uh, 15 days before uh, the inauguration here in the United States of uh, President uh, Biden. Um, and, and so it's easy to get off. It's easy to get off track, guys. Right. And our our focus be snatched from us because so much stuff is going on. So what what do we do next? Um, one of the things for me is what I've learned over the years is, I mean, there's always going to be something like as long as you're living, there's always going to be something. So what I've done is always made it a practice. If I'm not going to really genuinely get engaged, engaged in something, then I simply do what I know to do. And this is what I do. So you can figure out what you need to do. But what I do from my house, from my home, I just simply pray, right? Pray for the situation. Okay. I pray. So for instance, with this going on at the Capitol, what I can do from my standpoint, from my vantage point, is I can pray. But as an individual, as a citizen, there's a but. So, you know, if you're a person who prays, it's not only that you pray, but now the but is where you come in and what you can actively do. When I look at things like what's going on at the Capitol, it reminds me of a conversation that I've been having with people for, I don't know, maybe the last 15 years, 17 years, maybe. When you look at America, the collective of America, America has been considered the world power for many years now. But if you look at history, historically speaking, no power gets to stay power forever. If you look at the Roman in power, uh, empire, if you look at the Egyptian empire, if you look at the Medo-Persian empire, no empire, no power gets to stay power forever. So what does that look like? What, what does that look like? What is the transference of that power looks like? Now, I'm not a conspiracy theorist or anything like that, but you got to be able to see the writing on the wall. I think um, over these last several years, it's plain to see 
when I look at historically what makes a nation fall, it's plain to see what happens. Um, there's a guy by the name of uh, Alexander Tyler, and he talks about the will of democracy. He talks about the will of democracy. And in this will, he talks about how a nation goes from being in bondage and then goes to being in abundance and then goes from being abundance to apathy and then from uh, apathy to um, uh, destruction. And he talks about it begins to come from um, a separation of the classes, a separation of the classes where you're just left with um, a upper class and a lower class. And it's always going to be more lower class than upper class. And then those two entities begin to butt heads, right? Whether it's over money, whether it's over supplies, whether it's over quality of life. And this is what causes most nations to implode from the inside. When you look at historically, most nations, they weren't beat from the outside. They were beat from the inside. And for years, I've been seeing that happen in America, um, when you just look at our political system, um, we have a two party system. You have a two party system. So whenever you have a two party anything that always makes people have to take a side. Right. That always makes people have to take a side. And we see this all the time. Are you Republican? Are you Democrat? Are you Christian, non-Christian, right? Whenever there's two party, it's you always got to take a, a side. Whenever you got to take a side, there's always going to be combat. There's always going to be combat. So when you look at even our political system of only having two options, like in our system, we have two options. So now we end up saying things like, well, I need to vote for the lesser of two evils, right? I need to vote for the lesser of two evils because you only have these two, you know, um, most of you know, I, I live over in St. Martin as well. And St. Martin has a different um, political system. They have a parliamentary system. So they have the prime minister and then they have members of parliament, but they have several different parties. So um, just when you think about it, think about this. Um, when you say you're a Democrat or a Republican, every Republican, like Donald Trump says he's a Republican and John McCain said he was a Republican. Those are two different Republicans. Now, it's one party, but you you could see that they have two different ideologies. You can look on the Democratic side. You look at Bernie Sanders, who says he's a Democrat. And then Joe Biden, they have two different philosophies, but they both say that they're Democrat. So as a Democrat or a Republican, you're looking at these two entities or three entities that are running for an office that say they're either Democrat or Republican, but they have these wide varying opinions, right? It gets very confusing. And, you know, um, whenever you have those two, it causes anarchy. So I, you know, I've studied this stuff, you know, over 10 years now, just the nation building and um, democracies around the world. I'm currently living in my fifth country right now. And so I, you know, I lived in Germany for 15 years. And, and so um, I saw what that type of uh, government can do. Uh, once again, I live in St. Martin. So I'm looking at that type of government. And then I've lived here in America for quite a long time. So what, what, what do we do? What do we do guys? Um, for me personally, you know, the Bible says judgment must start at the house. It must start at the house. To me, I take that personal. It must start at my house, right? And so for me, what that means is I got to make sure that my family is prepared for whatever. And that's what I would suggest that you guys do. I would suggest that you make this year your focus year to make sure that your family stability is stable. Your finances, your insurances, your um, quality of life, because what 2020 showed us and what yesterday at the Capitol showed us that like literally it can go haywire at any time, that it can literally go haywire at any time. 
And so you want as an individual and as, you know, your family, you want to make sure that um, you're protected. You're you're protected. And um, whether that's having passports and being able to be flexible. Um, um, but what you don't want to do is just sit and be sitting like a sitting duck. Right. You don't want to be you want to be proactive about um, your family's options. You want to be proactive about your family's options. And this is please, this is not, you know, to scare anybody that, you know, that the world is coming to an end. But I don't want you guys to be vulnerable. Right. I don't want you to just be sitting back and being vulnerable. I want you to put yourselves and your family in a position where. Um, yep, we pray, we pray, but not only do we pray, we prepare, right? That's the but. We're prepared. We're praying. That's the that's our spiritual requirement, but our natural requirement is that we prepare. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs, a wise man sees trouble afar off and he prepares. A wise man sees trouble afar off and he prepares. And so when I look at, I don't know you know, 10 years, 20 years from now, what America will look like. And I want you guys to really think about this because every world power doesn't get to stay the world power. So what does that mean? I'm not saying we're going to fall to third nation, uh, third world situation, but what does, what does a world look like where maybe China is the leading power or maybe Russia is the leading power. I know for 2020, uh, just really reviewing what happened in the world landscape, um, a lot of the world has shifted how they think about America. Like, you know, I travel a lot. And so I'm in different regions all the time. I can see personally how the, the thought and the ideology on America has shifted. I remember, you know, um, to have an American passport was one of the, the highest things you could have. And now I look at when I travel, how some people now look at America, especially with the way that we've handled, uh, this COVID situation. Like there's a lot of countries now that I used to be able to go to that I can't even get into easily, um, because of the way America has handled COVID. So if it's just with this and now um, people are starting to see, OK, we don't have to be so self-reliant on the United States, um, you know, and, and this is a conversation. If you're inside the United States, um, it's it's hard to understand the impact. But, for instance, when I was living over in St. Martin, you could see how export right prices in St. Martin wasn't. Uh, impacted because supplies couldn't travel freely from the United States. So because supplies couldn't travel freely from the United States, St. Martin and other countries had to find other resources. They had to find other places to get this, this, uh, this stuff from. So now the world is shifting saying, Oh, we don't have to depend on the United States. We don't have to depend on the consumers in the United States. We can, we can depend on the consumers in China, the consumers in Russia, the consumers in Asia and, and, and Africa. And once that starts to shift, right, once that starts to shift, and we've been saying this for some time now, you know, even as an export country, America really doesn't export that much stuff. We're more consumers. And so now that the U.S. has kind of technically been shut down, even for people that are um, importing into America, they weren't able to import into America. They're finding other countries now to import. And so once you replace that money that you were getting from the U.S., then you really don't need the U.S. So then how does that impact the U.S.? Well, that's going to impact our jobs. That's going to impact our stability. That's going to impact. So now you can start seeing how America can start losing its grasp around the world. It can start losing its grasp around the world. And so we're part of the G8. You know, you understand, uh, I don't, you know, the G8, the power eight, the eight great countries. We're number one right now, but I can see us descending. So does that mean we fall to number four? Do that mean we fall to number five? I, I don't know, but the shift is going to happen. It is going to happen where America is not the world power. 
Now, once again, that doesn't mean we go to third world situations, but you want to make sure that you're flexible. So um, stay focused on um, what you need to do for yourself and what you need to do for your family and for those that um, you love, you know. And so on the spiritual side, we do pray. But on the practical side, you need to plan. Like, seriously, guys, you need to plan. You need to uh, open up your um, your 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 global eye gate. Um, I suggest that you go to Google and you start reading articles from around the world. Don't just look at what America's doing, but look at what the world is doing. How is the world handling this pandemic? How is the world handling COVID-19? How is the world shifting, right? Shifting. And I mean, I know this stuff. I'm not a political person. I'm not an economist or anything like that. I'm just a practical person who knows that I need to look at what's going on in the global landscape around the world. And so don't just be a sitting duck. Don't be that uh, a person, you know, <clears throat> I'll tell you, you know, the perception, the perception of Americans around the world is that we're egotistic, that we're closed mind, that we're narrow minded, that we don't have a worldview. And you can just simply check yourself, right? Just check yourself. Ask yourself personally, man, how do I, how much do I know about Canada? How much do I know about Canada? And how much do I know about Mexico? Honestly. Just ask yourself, honestly, man, what do I know about Canada and what do I know about Mexico? These are our two sister countries. These are the countries that we're in between. And ask yourself as an individual, how much do I know about them? How much if I asked you right now, right? Like, what is the what is the political landscape of Canada and what is the political landscape of Mexico? How much would you really know? Honestly. And if you don't know that, guys, come on. These are our sister these are our sister countries, Canada, right, and Mexico. So does Canada have a president, our prime minister? Does Mexico, what, what is their political landscape? What, how, how, are, how are they impacted by the U.S. and how are we impacted by them? Like, you got to know this stuff. You got to like you don't have to be a political junkie or uh, or anything like that. But this is just simple humanity, right? Just simple humanity that you need to know your neighbors. It's like your next door neighbors, like where you live right now, who are your next door neighbors? And as Americans, we do really bad at that. Like we really don't care about what's going on around the world. And what happens is one day you'll wake up and the world will change up under you and you don't want to be caught off guard guys. So I don't want any of you guys to be caught off guard. So what's next is you start preparing and you start preparing by studying. You start looking at different options. The, the world will look very different in 20 years. And 20 years doesn't take a long time. 20 years doesn't take a long time. If 2020 didn't show you anything, like literally how vulnerable, how vulnerable um, a country we are. The, the greatest country in the world was brought to its knees in a matter of months. In a matter of months because of consumerism, because we weren't able to shop. So in a matter of months, you got to see, my grandmother used to always say, you don't know where the holes are in the house until it starts raining. You don't know where the holes in the roof are until it starts raining. And so when it started raining in America, you got to see where all the holes were. And so it's now unto you, now that the sun is out a little bit, that you get those holes fixed, right? So if you felt as though you were vulnerable in 2020, whether it was a job loss, whether it was um, uh, they're shifting in how, you know, you got paid or your job or whatever, you need to start preparing for whatever is going to come next, right? Making sure you have your savings account, making sure you have, I, I know most of you have ha heard this before, right? Have three to six months of reserve, right? Ready. Um what if, you know, what if something happened and you weren't able to get to the bank and you weren't able to access your money? Do you have any, do you have any money at home? Petty cash, right? All these types of things, guys, like all these types of things that, you know, how long would you be able to survive? I'm not, listen, I'm not talking anarchy or anything like that, but I'm just simple, basic, you know, simplistic stuff, guys. 
that allows you to be prepared no matter what. So, you know, I know this is kind of weighty, you know, for a Thursday early morning. You know, it's not my usual, you know, motivational stuff, but you, we can't just be motivated and inspired. We got to be prepared as well. We got to be prepared as well. And I want you guys to be prepared. All right. So go out there and have a fantastic Thursday, guys. And uh, I'll talk to you soon.